nasty uh, beginning of summer cold for some reason, but uh, I'm finally getting over it. And uh, anyway, if, if I sound plugged up, that's what's going on. Anyway, uh, big news on the Unity development front. And here we go. The biggest news, of course, we go to the Unity site. If you haven't heard yet, Unity makes mobile development free. And so as you can see here, it looks like um, they have pictures of all the iOS devices and an HTC. So it looks like you can do your basic Unity and Android development uh, for free now. Now, of course, if you've used Unity in the past and looked at the different licensing requirements, you'll realize that there are quite a few restrictions on the free model. But there's nothing in there that, that you know, everything I've done so far has been with the not the free license, but with the basic license. And I would imagine that this has a lot of the same features as the basic license. So basically, you're going to be missing out on like some of the more advanced shaders. And you're going to be missing out on things like the network components. So you can't do multiplayer games. But since a lot of the stuff I do is kind of utilities or uh, kind of single player games, uh, to me it's not that big of a deal. But uh, obviously that is a really awesome thing for all of us developers out there. And in, in concert with that, if you go to the Unity Store, you'll see that there's another development, which is uh, that this came out um, apparently very recently. Uh, Unity Pro has gone from the massive um, $1,500 uh, flat fee to $75 per month. And uh, it's kind of similar to what Adobe is doing with this Creative Cloud. And uh, so if you look at that, um, obviously that is much cheaper than it has been in the past. So it was about $1,500. So 75 times 12 equals 900. So that's about, you know, a little bit over half off. Uh, of course, if you look down here, you'll see that if you want to do the other things, like, for example, um, Android programming, iOS those are extra fees. So, for example, in, in my case, I'm an iOS guy, more or less. So I would need Uni Pro and iOS Pro. Don't be fooled. You you need both together. If you want to do, uh, for example, Android or, or iOS, you're going to need Uni Pro and iOS Pro. So uh, if you wanted uh, Unity, Android, and iOS, you'd need 75 plus 75 plus 75. So in my case, Uni Pro plus iOS Pro all right, 150. All right, so $1,800, which is still roughly half the price of what it used to be, which was, or so that's for one year. It was around $3,000 for just Uni Pro uh, plus the iOS Pro. And then, of course, you can add the Android Pro or the other things on top of it, okay? So, um, you know, go through the fine print, of course. Like always, there's a lot of restrictions on things, but uh, this is great news for all of us. So in the spirit of that, let's do a Unity tutorial. All right, and by far the most requested thing that I've been asked for recently, uh, in the past I did a tutorial on how to create a health bar for things like, for example, like an RTS game, like StarCraft, where you have a bar... Uh, running from left to right, and as the creature's health decreases, the bar shortens. But in games like, for example, Diablo, uh, you have a globe which looks like it's filled with liquid, and it decreases as the character's health decreases. So let's take a look at this test scene I did. Hopefully this will run okay with the screen capture software in the way. It runs very, very slowly. So I have this kind of warrior character here who just does an idle pose over and over again and there we go so some some uh, target objects come out and of course when I run this in normal speed it runs very very quickly so wait, there we go there's a couple of them. okay so as you can see whenever those um, balls hit him in the chest his health decreases there's the uh, health globe down there represented by this um, globe. Now, normally in, in a Diablo-style game, you've got your uh, health globe. Oh, there's a bunch of them all at once. Uh, health globe there in the corner, in the left corner, and your mana globe in the, in the right corner. And then uh, I put a button here to show you that it goes both ways. I have a button here called Potion, which I can click on to add a little bit of uh, health to myself. So there you can see it, it kind of just 
does that. So, so let's go ahead and look at how this is done. So on to the main character here. Okay, this guy is called Scale, and he's one of the several characters I have in, in the games I was working on here. Uh, I've, I have this script attached to this guy. Uh, Diablo-style health globe script, okay? So let's take a look at this script. This is the main thing that we're going to be working on. Okay, so in the top here, uh, everything I do is JavaScript, and uh, there's not that much difference between that and the C-sharp. Uh, so basically, we have a, a few variables, and as you can see here, I, I've, I've kind of outlined what those variables do mostly. Uh, globe height, it's just the size of the health globe image, okay? And it also is used to uh, offset the, um, the GUI uh, representation on the screen. Uh, the picture, the globe pick is the actual uh, image texture we're going to use to represent the health globe. And the globe size, it's the size of the globe and, you know, used to d determine the position of the GUI elements. I'll get in that in a minute. HP is the health. Uh, max HP is the maximum health. And the health percentage is a floating point value. And it's it goes from 1.0, which is maximum health, and 0.0, .0 which is no health. Okay, so, uh, and then, of course, in my start function here, I just add this little line, animation.wrap mode equals wrap mode dot loop, so that my guy will keep animating over and over in his idle pose. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's get into the meat of this. What you really want to know is uh, all this is uh, accomplished inside of the on GUI function, all right? And uh, I, when I first set out to do this, I thought it would be really easy, but I found out it was actually... A little bit more challenging than I figured. I figured I could just put a mask on top of a, a, a GUI draw texture, and that would be it. But uh, there is no masking option in the Unity GUI at this moment. Uh, of course, there's plenty of um, awesome uh, options inside of the Unity App Store, but since uh, most of the people that watch my tutorials want to do things on you know, the extreme cheap end of things, uh, you know, I try, and, and also I try to do things using the actual software as is instead of using kind of components uh, that you have to buy. It's kind of like a, a cop out in a way. So, so let's do this using the built-in GUI components. Okay, so what I found was I, I couldn't use a mask, and I could not use. Uh, you know, I, I tried sliding the texture up and down and stuff like that. And what I found was that. Uh, there was no option. Well, there were there were a couple different things, but uh, nothing was really working except for this. Okay. Unfortunately, the screen capture software makes it very uh, the frame rate very slow inside of Unity itself in the game engine. Uh, but basically, I found my savior was this. Okay. There's a thing inside of Unity's GUI called a uh, a GUI group. Okay. So you do that with this um, this uh, command GUI dot begin group and you give this GUI group a rectangle. All right, as you can see here, I've given it a new rectangle and I've put the X coordinates in the corner and I've used the, um, the Y coordinate to be the screen height minus the globe height plus 20, just to give it a little bit of um, separation from the bottom of the screen. And then I made the size of this uh, GUI group this um, variable globe size that we so we can change the size of this anytime we want depending on how large we want this um, this health globe to be all right and then you end the group with this command called gui.end group so basically what you've done here with begin group and end group is you have created your own little tiny clipped gui area that you can play around in and everything inside of this gui group has its own coordinate system all right, so that was the savior of this thing. So now what I'm going to do inside of this GUI group, you can see there's only one command, which is GUI.draw texture. And I'm just going to draw that picture of the health globe. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it uh, inside of a rectangle. And as you can see, I set the X coordinate to zero. And so like I said, everything inside of this GUI group has its own coordinate system. So zero is the default upper left-hand corner. And uh, so the only thing that's changing in here is this part here. It's the, um, the Y coordinate. So I slide the Y coordinate up depending on the amount of health we have left. 
All right, the amount of health we have left is calculated by these uh, three lines here. All right, so we have our variable called health percent, and then our health percent is uh, calculated based on the amount of health we have, and then we uh, create a, another variable called globe height, the height of the globe that we're kind of sliding up and down, and that equals the health percent. So the health percent, again, is a variable between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. And so we just multiply that by the size of the health globe, and then we get an offset value that will slide the uh, texture up and down depending on how much um, health we have. The problem with this is that if we didn't compensate for it, it would look like the texture is just sliding up. And we want the health globe to stay in place uh, and look like it's depleting downwards. So in order to compensate for that, uh, inside this GUI group, we, we take the uh, Y coordinate of the GUI group and then we offset that by this part here. Uh, screen dot height minus, okay, and, and then in parentheses, the globe height, okay, the plus 20 is just to give it a little separation from the bottom of the screen. You know, you don't have, you can put whatever you want in there, it doesn't matter. And then these final variables, the uh, width and the height is just, you know, the globe size that I did. All right, then we end the group. Okay, and uh, then after that, I just I add this one little thing here as a utility thing. I add a little button uh, for like a health potion here. And as you can see, this is outside of that group, so it's got it's back to using the uh, normal Unity uh, screen coordinate system. And I just create a little standard GUI button called potion, and I just go ahead and add a, a little um, you know potion value. Uh, uh, add a little bit. Of, health points to that and add a little check here which just says that if the health goes over uh, over the maximum health then the health is the maximum health and then down here uh, at the bottom is the little script that runs that tells us to uh, when we get hit by those balls to decrease our health by a random amount okay so that's the basics of creating the uni GUI health system uh, I'm, I'm sorry the, the, the Diablo style uh, health globe and so as you can see here, um, let's go through it again, just, uh, just, you know, give you an overview. So we've got these variables here. The globe height is, you know, the height of that um, uh, texture there. Uh, it's used in, to offset the um, GUI group. Uh, the globe picture is the actual picture that we're use, using for the health globe. The globe size is the size we want the health globe to be. HP and max HP, that's pretty self-explanatory. And the health percent, again, it's very important. It has to be a number from 0, 0.0 to 1.0. Uh, also, you need to put checks in here. For example, if your HP goes cannot go over the maximum HP, uh, because if it does, you, you will see the script wig out completely. So make sure that whenever you add HP, like I did here with the uh, a potion button, you make sure you add a check that makes sure that the HP does not exceed the maximum HP. Otherwise, the script will uh, bug out on you. Okay, so basically, uh, again, um, what we did was we we put the um, GUI texture that represents the health globe inside of a GUI group, and whenever the uh, health of the character is damaged, we slide that GUI texture upwards in the Y coordinate, and and at the same time, we slide the entire group downwards at the same amount in the Y coordinate in the opposite direction so that it looks like it's standing in place. Okay, so I hope that that helps you guys out. And I hope you guys will download the new version of Unity and uh, get started on making games.